Today, I'm going to explain how much money that you need to prepare if you are planning to buy a property here in Florida. What is going on guys? This is RJ Bautista, your local incredible realtor with EXP Realty. Today, I'm going to explain how much money that you need to prepare if you are planning to buy a property here in Florida, not just about the closing costs, the down payment, okay? Because some people think all I need to have is just the closing costs and the down payment and we're good to go. No, it's not just about that one. So in this video, I will explain in details how much money that you need to prepare apart from those two, okay? However, before I start this video, if you're new to my channel, welcome, please subscribe and also the most important thing you know that match that like button me and also share this video to all family and friends especially for those people who's planning to buy a property and also the first time home buyer because sometimes if you're a first time home buyer you don't know what you don't know so here i will help you to summarize all the costs for you all right so without further ado let's jump into it so number one that you need to think about as i said earlier you need to make sure how much down payment you need to prepare before buying a property okay i did a video video about which kind of loan that you are available or the available loan for you or a mortgage loan for you where you can find like from 3.5% for the first time home buyer or I would say the FHA loan or you can have as low as like 3% for conventional loan if you are a first time home buyer too. However, some lender they give you like 3% or 5% conventional loan. It depends on the terms and condition of the lender. Make sure you check your lender out. And and also, I will put a link up here or here, the video that I just made before regarding this different kind of lending or um, different kind of mortgage loan because as I said, I'm not a lender. I'm just learning this, you know, from my experience and also to my lender who's working to all my clients, okay? So let's get jump into it. So let's say, for example, we need to get like a price point that we're looking for the property so we can get some numbers here, okay? But please bear with me. I'm not good in numbers. I failed my maths. My my calculation here is wrong is bearing me okay so let's jump into this one so let's say the property price is four hundred thousand dollars okay that's the property price and let's say we are looking around to purchase this property four hundred thousand dollars with three point five percent down payment okay so how do you get the three point five down payment for four hundred thousand so this is easy before I don't know how to do this right so I just learned this one due to this experience so I'm just sharing with you okay so how to times that one 3.5 to get your 3.5 down payment to 400 so all you need to do i have a calculator here which i will show you how to do it okay so here is the calculator let's say 400,000 times 0 0.035 that's your 3.5 percent which is will give you 14,000 okay 14,000 dollars that is your down payment for three and a half percent for fha loan okay remember that one so that is for the 400,000 so you need to have this 14,000 before closing or on closing okay this is what you need to provide when you are um going to close the property that you would like to buy okay remember that one so that is the down payment so let's go to closing costs i know i've mentioned this before to my couple of video about closing costs but you know for the sake of this video i will do it again so if you missed that video that i just did in the past just watch this video okay so let's say the closing costs all depend on the fees lender fees title fees you know all the fees that you need pay for your lender so for me estimated closing costs what i normally do is times 2.5 percent of what is the property cost why five percent that's quite high i always want to be conservative like high price than low price and then once you get to the closing table you will feel like whoa this is what i saw before and this is what i was thinking that i'm going to pay and then once you get to the closing table on the closing day you might shock because why you are paying more okay so i just wanted to give you a conservative price or higher price so that you won't expect that high or you know really low and then when you get there you will be surprised okay i hope that makes sense so let's say the property price is four hundred thousand. here you go and you need to times that to let's say five percent okay that's why i said 0.05 that is twenty thousand. okay twenty thousand that you need to prepare for closing costs so what is in closing costs so here in closing costs i i said earlier there's a lot of 
of stuff that you need to think about closing costs. This is not about just the closing costs of what you need to pay to close the property. In closing costs, there's a lot of stuff that you need to consider. Number one, most lender, they ask for lender fees, okay? You need to pay for lender fees. Some lender, they have pay some third party for your closing to be faster and more efficient for you. So every service that the lender do, obviously that's the cost for you as a buyer that you need to make sure that you are cover that service to make sure that everything's gonna be okay. Second, you need to pay for the title fees which is included in the closing costs and also some prorated tax, you know, property taxes, what you need to pay when it's prorated. If you don't know about the prorated, it means like if you are going to close in the middle of year, let's say you are closing like this month is June and you're closing July which is six months. So the property tax that you need to pay, you don't have to pay the whole year. So what they normally do is they prorated prorated for whenever you stay in the property. Let's say you are staying the property from July to the December. So the only need you need to pay for the property tax is from July to December. And then from January to July, from the previous year or the, this year, you don't have to pay that one. The seller will pay that one, you know, to make it equal. I hope that makes sense. Any question, comment down below. I'll be happy to answer all your questions regarding this prorated taxes and prorated title fees and whatever, okay? I'll try my best. So that's the one that you need to think about, about the closing costs, okay? Also, in closing costs, you need to have a payment for appraisal, okay? Appraisal probably included on that particular 20000 However, remember this, they will minus whatever the appraisal is. Let's say the appraisal will cost you $1,000, okay? So $1,000, you need to have that in front, okay? Because this closing cost and also the down payment, you have paid that at the closing table or at the closing day, okay? So once you got under contract, you need to prepare for these three, okay? Remember this one. This is very important because if you're not able to prepare this money or these three that I'm gonna talk about, your closing will be delayed or you might not get close this property, okay? So number one that you need to prepare is once you get under contract, you need to get the earnest money deposit, okay? What is earnest money deposit? Earnest money deposit is 1%, normally 1% of the property. So let's say 400,000 back here again in my calculator, 400,000 times 0 0.01 will be 4,000, okay? So you need to prepare the 4,000 once you get under contract. It depends on your contract. It could be in three days, four days, or five days, or even longer. It depends on your contract, as I said. This 4,000 that you need to prepare once you have reached your day when you're going to pay your earnest money deposit. So this earning money deposit will go towards to your down payment. So remember what I told you before, the 3.5% is the down payment. So let's say 400,000 times 0 0.035 is 14,000. Now we will minus the 4,000 there equals 10,000. So the 4,000 that you gave or give early for earning money deposit, they will minus that to your closing costs, not closing costs to your down payment. So your down payment will be only $10,000 because that 4,000 you pay on earnest money deposit within three days, four or five days after you get under contract, you minus that already the 4,000. So you only need to pay at the closing table or the closing day will be $10,000. I hope that makes sense. Okay. That's the earnest money deposit. So here's the thing. Once you get under contract, you have to prepare for inspection. Inspection normally the buyer, you, the audience who watching this video are the one who needs to prepare or you need pay for the inspection of the property. Unless you don't want to inspect the property, that is all up to you. So how much the inspection cost? So once again, I want to be a conservative. I want to give you higher prices so that once you get there, instead of paying this amount, I'm going to tell you. And then, you know, rather than me saying you this only amount that you need to pay. And then once the inspector there, you might get shocked why this is expensive. Okay. So normally what I would say, the inspection fee here in around in my area is around $500. Okay. So make sure that you have that $500 before that inspection or during the inspection day. Okay. The inspection normally once you sign the under contract, they will give you up to seven days, up to 14 days. It depends on your contract once again. Okay. Normally seven days within a week, you need to inspect this property if you are happy about this property and then you will need to pay the earnest money deposit as I said earlier. And then here, one more tip. If 
you are not happy about the property after the inspection, when is your inspection period within, let's say, seven days, and then you inspect the property after under contract in three days, remember this, you are entitled to back out to the deal. And then once you paid your earnest money deposit for 4000 you can get that back as long as you still on eight days period or seven days period of the inspection period time, okay? Because if you are over on the inspection period time and you change your mind, you're not be able to get the earnest money deposit back. Why? Because you signed the contract that inspection period time is only until this amount of time or until like seven days, okay? So that's the most important thing that you need to remember. So once after the inspection time is over, all you need to prepare now is for the appraisal fee. Sometimes you need to pay for appraisal between $500 to $1,000. I just want to make conservative here to make sure that you understand this, okay? Because sometimes if you don't know the appraisal, that's the service that you need to do before you go proceed for the closing because sometimes when you put some offer on the property let's say you put an offer for 400,000 and they want you to appraise it if it's appraised more than 4,000 400,000 or if it's appraised below 400,000 then they can negotiate it either negotiate your realtor on your behalf or the seller will negotiate if it's over 400,000 I hope that makes sense so that's the appraisal job for you that's why you need to pay them so once everything okay inspect is good appraisal is good good to go and then what's the next time is your closing day yes you will get like a clear to close so once you get the clear to close it means like it's closing day yay so it means like everything's go smooth everything is planned everything is no problem so it means like you're gonna close the property the buyer will get the property and the seller will sell the property to you all right so this is the video for today i hope this video is helpful i know this is long video i'm sorry about that but you watch this video until this and comment down below appraisal so i can see how many people who watch this video until this end and i would really appreciate that one and once again thank you for watching i'll see you on my next video peace what is going on guys this is rj bautista hold on is my mic working hello like this yeah is it working i thought it doesn't <laughs> so let's just do it again part two